beautiful little pink flowers. They're almost like orchids to look at. But you can also put them in a little geranium. Rose bouquet. Look at that. Hello and welcome to Shirl's Divine Styling. Today I thought instead of um, doing some styling I would actually talk about one of my other um, favourite plants, or actually both, two of them. Um, and this is the African Violets and the Streptocarpus, who are related. Um, the African Violets I, I love. I think that a lot of us have some African Violets in our home because they are just so diddy, they're so sweet, they can get very bushy, um, but they are, they're just so prolific. Um, they start flowering for me around March and they just go on and on and on. And if they die down like this one has now, right now, we've had some really hot weather for over a week and I think that the air has just dried one or two of them up. And But it doesn't matter because they're so fast at flowering. Before you know it, they'll be flowering again. And there are so many varieties and so many colours. And you can just have them dotted around on various windowsills. But you do have to keep the thought that they cannot be in full sun. So an easterly window is good. A westerly. Um, maybe not on a window sill, but near the window, so they get lots of light because they do need lots of light. And it is absolutely hilarious when you start to really take on plants in your life. You hear the same expressions. They need lots of light, but they can't have full sun. You know, they need watering, but you can't water them too much, and it just goes on. But it's basically a question of experience. As you go along, you notice that, you know, they, they literally are slightly different. Each plant is slightly different. And then there's the atmosphere. Now, African violets, they come from Africa um, and they grow um, in a rainforest conditions. They have a lot of humidity and they don't have full sun because it's a rainforest there's lots of big bushes and whatever there is in the rainforest trees and things so you don't get all that full glaring sun but they do have to have sun because if they don't have sun they will not flower they just won't um and they have these most beautiful beautiful fleshy little leaves they're so lovely and they're quite prolific as I said the flowers are just coming up and up and the buds are coming on and on you've got some flowers all through the best part of the year anyway um, and so I thought we'd just talk about them today um, there are so many different ones um, you can get them quite big uh, and you can get them down in size and then you can get quite small ones um, this one is a cutting uh, that we took ourselves at home here, uh, a leaf cutting from one of the plants. I think this one is a cutting as well. And the mother plant is somewhere in the house. She's a bit bigger now. And um, before you know it, you've got this beautiful little plant and they, you know, provided it's the right time of the year, up comes the flowers quite quickly. So. They're really lovely and the flowers last quite a while and because there's quite a lot of them, uh, as they die off you just pull them off and, and up will come another one or two in its place. It's, they're just so lovely to have. And so they're great fun with the propagation, the varieties and the constant giving you flowers. Now obviously if you don't fertilise them, there's lots of African violet fertiliser on the market and in the shops and everywhere so you can always get that. Don't over fertilise, once a month, just a certain amount, don't give them too much. Um, it's better to give less than too much. Um, and uh, yeah, you will always have these beautiful, beautiful flowers. Now just here, um, I had a, a couple of... Um, this one particularly, it, she's lost her flowers, I'm so sh sorry. Hopefully we'll be able to put a picture up for you to see the flower. That's what's left of this one here, it's all dried up. 
um, and she is called Armadeus. Now she had really, she started to get really quite bushy and these leaves were just sticking out like this, uh, looking a bit unsightly, so I just snipped them off. And this is what you can do, as they get too bushy for you, you can just snip them off. And then, of course, there is a perfect leaf. Only use the ones that look really healthy and really good. And you can just rest them in water like this. This is probably going to slip off because I haven't got anything with me to stop it slipping off. But you could put some sellotape or some cling film, little, little lines of cling film like that across. And that would just stop the leaf from falling in. And then after, I can't remember now, maybe a month, you'll start to see um, little shoots and eventually you will have little baby leaves um, and then you will be able to watch them grow, um, remove the mother leaf and replant and separate the little tiny leaves and then just set very gently as they're rooting um, in the soil and, and you will have more African violets but the problem is that this is so easy it's so regular it's so easy to do that if you're not careful you'll just be completely inundated with African violets so unless you've got a huge family and lots of friends and family and co-workers to give these plants to it's probably not such a good idea that you do too many but if you've got a favorite one uh, which I'm going to show you in a minute one of my favorites. This one is a favorite of mine So this is going to be really nice. It's nice to get a second one uh, or, or a third one. So I've got a couple of leaves from this one now because she was getting really quite Bushy like that. So at least one of these leaves is going to take and I'm not going to lose it and I'm going to have another Armadeus and she's worth having because she's really beautiful flower. I'm, I'm hoping that you've seen the flower right now. It's sort of purple, it has a little yellow on the inside, has some markings through it, and it's a beautiful flower. And they're quite bushy. They get quite big like that. This particular one I'm talking about now. With uh, watering, uh, a lot of people say water from the base. Now that is the normal way of doing it. Um, but you can water across the top. But if you do, I would water always at the very edge of the rim of your pot, always the very edge. You don't want the main plants to get saturated with water, especially not from the top. You don't want the leaves to be wet either. So it's better if you water from around the edge of your pot. The water will just, you know, go across the soil in its own way and uh, whatever isn't used will go into the trough at the base and then that will be sucked up naturally like a sponge throughout the whole pot. So um, you can do it that way. I tend to do it that way because I have shelves that are in awkward places and so it's easier for me with um, a watering can that has a very fine uh, nozzle like that that I can actually get around and just drip around the edges a couple of times and, and they water that way but I mean I used to always water at the bottom in the past so so it is safer to water at the bottom um, the other thing is I was saying about the humidity um, if you've got a young plant this one I mean, she has actually got started now quite well. As you can see, she's got flowers and leaves and stuff. But if they're a bit smaller and they've only just sort of got going, if you're worrying about, or even like this, if you're worrying about humidity, um, yes, you, you know, you can have a humidifier and various things, can't you? Uh, but you can also put them in a little terrarium. And that will help get them going. Uh, it will create a moisture level that is higher than in your room and I'm not sure if this is going to go in now, now that I've done it, but anyway, um, they can go in and then they'll sit in there like that. You could probably get two in here, two small ones or maybe three and that will give them quite a bit of humidity um, and you can also, if you're worried about, you know, mould or anything, you could just put a little something to keep a little a little gap 
uh, of, you, of the roof so that a little more air goes in. But it will still act as um, a place that is far more humid than the room you're in if you've got that kind of problem. But don't have them right by a window because then it will be like a mirror and you'll intensify the heat and you might end up cooking your African violet or whatever else you've got in there. Now this one is called um, Lucretia, if that's how you pronounce it. And she's just divine, <laughs> my favourite word. She is divine. She has the most beautiful little pink flowers and they're kind of sparkly, the petals. And she has little bits of yellow in the centre where the seeds, I suppose, might be. And little sort of lighter pink edges to the leaves. And they're just throwing these, these flowers up all the time. It's just so lovely. And I keep them in the kitchen because in the kitchen, of course, you've got more moisture in the air. And that's what they like. They like the moisture. I don't spray them. I don't think it's wise to miss them because um, the leaves... They can take a little bit, but not that much. And also the crown in the centre, you're not really supposed to get wet. So you don't really need to do the misting anyway. I mean, if they're by some kind of like little home waterfall or just in the kitchen or even in the bathroom where there is moisture in the air, um, that is really good for them. I mean, I've kept them uh, in the lounge on my windowsill, um, one or two of them. I've got one in the kitchen. I've had her for as long as my orchids, probably 12, 15 years. And apparently they can go on 40 years, 50 years. So, you know, they're lifelong, lifelong plants. Lovely, lovely plants. Um, and I mean, I don't repot them every year, but you're supposed to repot them every year, but you can repot them every couple of years. Or if you've started a cutting, uh, as you can see, this different stages here. This one's bigger. Um, once they start to look as if they're filling their pot and their young plants, you know that the main sort of shape is going to be like that. So you want to sort of then change that pot so every now and again so it gets, it's able to grow and stretch uh, that kind of a thing. Now a lot of people say that you should use terracotta pots or ceramic pots. Um, oh, I've used plastic pots and I, I've had no problem at all. So um, they're not that picky, they're not that difficult. So long as you give them warmth and you give them moisture in the air um, and you regularly water them. I mean, even, even saying that, um, I don't always remember to water them every single week and you know they've got fleshy leaves which sort of retain quite a lot of moisture so they really are a lovely plant to have and that's why so many people have them. Anyway I thought I'd talk to you about them. I've got some variegated ones here. This one this I, is dreamy. This is called, I'm going to have to take some cutting from her because I love her. She's, uh, I bought her last year and she has kind of doubled in size. Um, and she's called Ballot Dress. And she has absolutely beautiful lilac -y centers, but with almost white leaves, kind of creamy. Um, and, and she's got various tinges of lilac on the edges of the white and the petals are ruffled like a dress. And so it, I suppose that's why they've given her the name. And she's absolutely beautiful. And she is variegated. She has variegated leaves that come up from the center. Um, and I have another one there, which I'm gonna show you in a moment. The variegated leaves need to be um, in the sun as well and not direct sun, but they do need the light. They need up to 12 or 14 hours of daylight, apparently. I wouldn't say that mine have that. I live in England. We don't have that much light, but um, a fair amount of light, of course. But um, this time of the year, just look at that. This is called Rose Bouquet. Look at that. Isn't she just 
beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And she really is um, beautiful. She's got these most wonderful little roses coming up rather than the normal type of flower. You can see the comparison. She's different. And she's variegated. And she's my pride and joy at the moment. So I'm going to take some leaf cuttings of her as well. I might come back and show you because I've got various propagated leaves going on in the house here and I really should do something about that. I should show you all the different ones um, and how I'm coping with them and how I'm going to go on and plant them. Um, but again, you have to keep her in the light to get this variegation, otherwise they will go green again. And um, she's just beautiful, absolutely stunning and beautiful. Now, apart from them, I thought I might just tell you about another plant that I love, which is actually um, a relative of African violets. And um, this is Streptocarpus, and she is beautiful as well. They're a different type of plant, but they are a relative of the African violets. They have long, tapered leaves, which can be a bit, bit of a nuisance sometimes because they're a bit long. But just like the African violets, they are prolific flowers. They start in March. You never think it's going to happen, and then it does. And they start in March, and they just go on and on and on until way into October before I had, you know, they stop flowering for me. And they are just beautiful. They're just like bells. And they're almost like orchids to look at. The flowering. The flowers are just beautiful. And when they die down a little bit, they, they're the new ones are there before you know it. You can see the little tiny ones. I don't know if you can actually see here. This here. They're little buds. Look at them. And they come up like seahorses. They bend right down. And their little buds are like that. And eventually they just come up and open for you. It's so sweet. It's so sweet. And as I said, they're wonderful. Their flowers just go on and on. This one is called Carnival. And she's a purple with a little flex of yellow on the inside and the top half is white. And she's beautiful. And I've had her now um, maybe a year and a half or two. I'm not sure how long. I can never remember with my plants how long I have things. But last year I bought some babies. And this one is just terrific. She's called harlequin blue now i've had these only a couple of months and the leaves were no bigger than this look how big the leaves have got and she's flowering already just look at those flowers they're just beautiful absolutely beautiful and so i know that i'm going to have a lot of joy with this and i'm going to propagate the leaves so that i can get some more of these ones and then this one is also a beautiful little, little flower. She's just gorgeous. She's absolutely gorgeous. So, those are my little streptocarpus. And so I've got my um, collection, I've got quite a few of African uh, violets in the, uh, the back there, but I don't have enough room to put everything. So I thought I'd just talk to you briefly about the variegated ones, the beautiful little ones that I have, a little bit on the propagation and the um, beautiful uh, flowers uh, here. These actually grow on um, hillsides and cliff faces. You just can't imagine it, can you, really? When you see them in the pot like that, you wouldn't, you just can't imagine it, but that's what they do. So with that, I thought I'd just leave you with those thoughts for today um, and um, maybe come back another time 
and show you some of the um, propagations, how these ones have gone on, and uh, whether or not I have a go at doing these. These are different again, if you want to propagate these, these are a bit more complicated. You don't just whip off a leaf and stick it in the water. Um, they have like a spine down the middle here, and lots of various veins, and you cut the leaf, and you cut out the spine, and then you chop bits of leaf. Um, you can sterilize them, wash them, and then you plant them uh, raw edge down in um, vermiculite and pearlite, 50% uh, of each in uh, some kind of trough or whatever you've got, a couple of inches deep. And then you have to wait for a quite a while, a month or two, before you see um, anything coming but then you'll have a lot of little plants so it is worth looking into if you'd like to do that in the future um, I'm not sure if I will because it does take a little bit more effort and I've got other things to do but it is a nice thought to choose your favorite plants and then try and propagate them so that you have them again just in case your main one has a problem you know you go on holiday and come back and and they've gone and withered away and then you've got to go and buy another one and it's so sad. But um, propagating is quite a lovely idea really. So um, with that I'll leave you. I hope that you've enjoyed uh, the video, enjoyed listening and looking at what I've got. And um, I hope you like and subscribe for me uh, because all this helps the channel, helps me keep going. And um, with that, I'll leave you for now. Bye. Bye.